So, um, I want to bring the word today. A lot of it is my word. All right. Maybe over the years, uh, my wife and I has gathered a little bit of wisdom. Okay. I'm not saying you're not wise. But I was praying for our grandkids uh, last night, uh, the night before, and I said, I got to pray for wisdom for you. And they all want it. They all wanted wisdom. So even though uh, we're getting up in age, we still want more wisdom. Because wisdom will stop us from doing stuff we should not be doing. So Pastor Travis asked uh, while we were talking to him, and he said, February is family month, meaning we're going to be talking about family relationship okay so because I'm the first one I got my pick see and I said okay I'll we'll speak on fathers it's not Father's Day right but I want to talk on father because the father is the anchor of the family Ladies, not that you're not an anchor, but uh, God designed it a certain way. And the dad is very important. And we have to realize that, that if you're a dad, you want to be a better dad, right? And um, I'm talking about a lot of stuff here today. I got, uh, well, I think I got enough time. I could have talked about a lot of um, about a dad. A dad is a protector, right? God is our protector. He's our heavenly father, right? He's also a provider. He provides for us. You know, as I grew up, we had seven kids at the table, and my dad went out to work and provide. My wife had 20 kids at the table, and the poor dad works all the time to provide. Isn't that true? Hard worker, right. But uh, I want to talk to you today about one spe specific thing is uh, a dad is discipline, disciplinary, is that how you say it? Okay. So a dad really should take that place. Not that a lady or a mother cannot discipline, that's not true. But if a dad disciplined in love, you're going to have a good kid. And um, the title of this message, um, there's no bad kid, only bad parents. All right? It's pretty heavy. Because I always got to come back to you and say, yeah, I must have done something wrong. You know, don't blame the kids. I mean, he doesn't know you didn't tell him or whatever. So if Peter wants to talk to you and he says to you, there's no bad kid, what do you think? Only bad parents, right, Peter? Because he's an elder, and I'll come back to that later. Okay. Um, the last two years, we've been involved a lot with uh, relationship, Okay. And uh, maybe I was going to talk on relationship between man and woman, husband and wife, and, but no, father. So if you're a dad, keep your ear open. Because not that everything that I say would be scriptural, though I'm going to quote scripture and I'm going to show you from the word. Um, and the biggest Glitch. How, is that glitch how you say it? Okay. Glitch. Um, in man and woman is affected by the father. If you have sons, that is going to affect them really uh, for the good or for the bad. Okay. Uh, if your daughter the daughter needs the dad so much because it's who, it's, who, it's 
who she sees is, is the man of her life. She, she, she wants to pick a husband that looks just like the dad. Even though the dad could be alcoholic and he could be uh, controlling and all that stuff, she, she, she's familiar with that and she looks at the dad and says, she bypass all that and chances are she'll get exactly the same thing as the dad. She'll go and pick somebody that's abusive, that's somebody, and because she's in love and she doesn't see. How many, we marry, I married quite a few people in this place. One couple I married, they lived together for seven years. And then I married them, I think it's here, or upstairs, I forget. One week after, they were divorced. Well, they didn't get the divorce, but they applied for the divorce a week after. So th that's kind of messy. Uh, they were perfect. They came and saw me and everything, and, th and then I married them, and you got my blessing. But there was so much garbage in their life. How can that last, right? Um, so a mother's job is to love. Nurture, not, not, not nurture, thank you. And uh, maybe a peacekeeper too. And the dad's uh, job is to discipline, I mentioned it, protect, support, and provide. If that's missing in the kid's life, you got a kid that had a hard time, okay? So my first thought today because I, I'm going to teach about father. And I said, okay, I'm going to teach about the good. I'm going to teach about the bad. And I'm going to teach about the ugly father. <laughs> uh, <laughs> because I've been the three of them. I've been good. I've been bad. Bad in the fact that I, I didn't maybe show the love I should or do the right thing. And I've been ugly. Come on. <laughs> All right. Awesome. <laughs> All right. We're, we're done with the ugly now. Okay. <laughs> so I, I want to just... Let you man have it. This is the way it is and all that stuff. But the one scripture stood out is John 3, verse 17. And uh, let's read it. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that, through the, that, that the world through him might be saved. Okay? So Jesus is not here to condemn you because of, Maybe you weren't, they didn't act like a right dad or whatever. You know, because it depends who raised you. Jesus didn't want to condemn the, the world, so I don't want to condemn anybody. Everything that I say, I want to say it in love. All right? So if Jesus don't condemn, I don't want to condemn. It's so easy to condemn, to judge, and just to, to basically... Uh, and sometimes we go there and we should not go there. Jesus said, you got to love your brothers and your sister. And, you know, stay away from condemnation. So, um, then I, re I read that and I said, wow, I can't do that. So my goal is that every man in this place would become a better father. Doesn't matter if you just got married, you have no kid. Doesn't matter if your kids are gone, your kids are at home. You want to be a better dad, okay? Even I want to be a better dad now, you know? And so you want to become a better dad. So today, because of what I know, um, And that's a decision that I, I made. I would never marry a couple anymore unless they do an emotional test. Because the emotional test tells everything about who you are. And you know, I had a couple coming and, and uh, 
And they say, oh, we're so much in love. Ooh. Ah, they're, they're in the cloud. But they don't know that that man was raised by an abusive father, uh, which is angry at such a level. And every time things are not running his way, he just loses it. It's like a bomb ready to explode. And it's not if it's going to explode, it's when it's going to explode. And I had people, on their honeymoon, there was explosion. And that's the, was the beginning. So I, I don't, I wouldn't do that. Now I would say, okay, let's find out you. Let's find out your past. Let's look at it. Because I find men and women are dealing different. And that's not the word. I got my water someplace. <sighs> And I know that's a heavy statement not to marry anybody except they do a test because it's going to come later. The explosion is going to be later. It's better to have it now, in love, in front of the pastor, than later in uh, some other place, right? So there's no bad kids. There's only bad parents. At about 90%, I would say, okay? 90%. Yeah, not everything is, is perfect. So, um, kids will test you and put you to the limit. How many can say amen to that? Amen. You probably did the same thing with your folks. Oh, amen. I know I probably, like, like Paul, be the greatest of the sinners. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, kids will push you to the limit. Okay. My son Nathan, he was about five years old, six years old. And in those days, I was 20, 30 years ago, there was a show on TV. Maybe some of you remember, it was the kid, kid car? A black car? Knight Rider. And you know what? He had to watch Knight Rider, and it came on just before his bedtime. So for Christmas, he wanted a night Rider car. So we got one about a foot long, made out of steel, with plastic wheel and everything. And he was so happy. And he, in his mind, figured this is indestructible. And he'd bank it, you know, he was just throw it against the brick, and he would, uh, you know, put it on the stove, I mean, you name it. And you know what? After a couple of weeks, the car looked like a piece of junk. <laughs> you know, it was, uh, he thought it was indestructible. But no, uh, you know, it, uh, the car was destructible. Um, so, um, what's the title of my mes message? Okay. So let's remember that, okay? No bad kid, only bad parents. I know some of you can argue with that, but that's okay, okay? If you administer no discipline to your kid, talking to the man, maybe to the lady, or bad discipline, no discipline or bad discipline, you can ruin your kids. Discipline has to be done in love. It has to be done in love. You know, otherwise something is going to happen and you're going to mess up. Uh, um, one thing I feel strongly is about a mother that has to raise her kids on her home. The father is absent or he ran away. She has to work. She has to be a mother. She has to be a father. I mean, those women should sit in the front row in heaven. Do you agree with me? 
because they're doing the work of two people for a lifetime. And you know, it's not easy. Um, I want to tell you a story. <clears throat> You're supposed to say a story, right? A story. Women are, I would, if I say women are more emotional than men. How many would agree? Men? Okay. So I got one in men anyway. Yeah. There was a, there was a, this little kid, you know, and he got in a fight with his mother and he went in his bedroom and then when he got in the bedroom, the dad came in and the mother was crying. And, you know. So why are you crying? Because Johnny wrote on the door on a piece of paper, I ate my mother. Did I say hate or? <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so the dad comes in and uh, she's crying. And Well, I'll go talk to him. I'll go talk to Johnny. So he goes in the bedroom and he talks to Johnny. And Johnny runs out the door of his bedroom. And he takes his pen and he, he stroked mother and he I hate my dad. <laughs> so then the dad comes out, he sees, oh, he hates me now. <laughs> and he goes and talks to the mother and he said, that's okay, you'll get over it. You'll get over it, right? Sometime men will get over it a little quicker without an emotion. But this is the, the crunch, okay? about emotion. I'm going to tell you something. Men are emotional. Don't hear too many amen there. <laughs> Neither from the man or the woman. <laughs> woman, say that with me, okay? Men are emotional. Now say it like you mean it. Men are emotional. There you go, men. You can give the lady a hand. Right. But what happened? I always, ever since two years ago, we began to do uh, caring for the heart. And uh, there was a problem. Men tang tang seem to be, what's the word? Intellectual. And uh, it seemed that it, it bypassed the emotion. And I couldn't figure out why men didn't express emotion until we did a test uh, about with somebody. They're not from this church. You wouldn't know them in a thousand years, never met them. They're away from here. I can tell you the result of the test to you. So this man, after he did the test, he showed 99% depressed. That's at the top. Mind you, just a month before, he tried to kill himself. That's 99%, okay? And, and he's, he shows uh, uh, anger, anger and control way up there, right? And then we look at his love column. His love column is at 95%, meaning he's got 95% of love to give, but he can't give it because he's locked. He is emotional, but he can't because he's completely locked it in his emotion. And we begin to, to work with him. And uh, what happened is his father beat the pulp out of him. Like really bad. And what happened with men, what I can see, I mean, it's not so much biblical here, but from what we do, when a woman gets hurt, she goes and cries on somebody's shoulder, a friend, a sister, a family, oh, look what he did to me. <laughs> and, and she does that, and she released something here. She deal with her emotion. But when a man gets beaten to a pulp, he built a hanger system. 
Nobody ever going to do that. I'm never going to be in that position again. You won't say nothing to anybody, but you will put that like a garment on. And he locks his emotion. And he, he can't express himself after a while. So yes, when uh, people get married, and they, you don't see that, but the explosion comes after. So, but so many people are like that. Why? Be, look at it. I'm a baby boomer, okay? You know what that means? Yeah. So, I'm a baby boomer, and this is a picture of the war, okay? Now, this is Pastor Travis' first movie, okay? They filmed that in, uh, yeah, he's right there. Can you see him at the top there? Yeah, right at the top. Not, it looks like him, but it's this one over here. Yeah, right there. So, a few years ago, maybe 10 years ago, I had a man in my place. And he was 95 years old, 93, something like that. And he says to me, I know there's something missing in my life and I want to do before I die. And I said, what you have to do is give your heart to the Lord. And I told him that. So when he looked at me, he says, I can't. Because I was at the war. And I saw things there, people cut in half. You name it. And they did that in the name of God. They did it all that. And he says, you know what? I don't want to have nothing to do with God. And he was so hurt, so angry. I mean, he couldn't even say a salvation prayer to get close to God. So war, war is destructive. My wife's brother-in-law was captured by the Japanese for so many months or maybe years. It was like hell in that place. When he came out of there, he was like skin and bone, never the same. Emotionally, physically, it was not the same. You know, it destroyed. And some, man, some men went to war, came back, and raised their kids with the boot and without love. They can't love. They're emotionally basket case. And they raise their kids the same way, and now the kids are the same. Because uh, there's a thing that says something about the monkey. Monkey, or oh, monkey see, monkey do. Is that true? So the w same way you were raised, you're going to be, even though you're a Christian. I was a, I was a Christian. You know what my dad did? My mother sat in the front, my father drove, and one kid beside, there was long seats, right? right? And there were six of us in the back. And you know what? We just, we were bad. I know there's no bad kid, <laughs> but it, it was not good. And my father would just boil right to the top, right? Trying to drive, and he would take his arm, swing, and got three or four at time, one shot. And, you know, then they start crying, everything settles down and all that stuff. And I thought, you know, I'm, I, I was pretty smart. I'd just sit by the door and hid, you know, and he, he always missed me somehow. Say, uh, that's wisdom or something. <laughs> but you know what? I, I got married. I'm a Christian, and, and I, I'm driving the car, and the three boys in the back. You know, I don't know about girls, but I know boys can be, yeah. Anyway, I, I ended up and do the same thing. Whack, you know? And I get one or two in one shot. And that settles things. It's just what you see being done in your own life. Somehow, it becomes something you do. Whether it's good, whether it's bad. Because we are the kind of creature, isn't that right? So uh, men that came back from the war, they were messed up. Um, they became abusive, addictive, controlling, hangry, um, 
And you know, I, I talked to men, they had broken nose five times, and the young here from the dad, whack, you know. And you know, today, well, he was. He was full of anger, but we dealt with it. Now he's free. But for years, he came to me, he says, you know, there's so much anger in me, I don't know what to do. I had to deal with this anger, you know, from his dad. So that he doesn't pass it on to somebody else. Say, you want to stop at you. If there's a problem in your marriage, in your life, you want to stop it there. Because if you don't, it will go on to your kids. And it goes on and on. All right. Um, you don't have to be a Christian to be a good father. That's a quote. That quote. I saw. I know a lot of good dad. They're not a believer, but they love their kid. They provide. They discipline them right. They do everything right, and they're not believers. So how much more us? as believer, should be doing exactly the right thing. Because we got God on our side. He will lead and guide you and tell us what to do. Roman 2.14. Roman 2.14. And I'm giving you that scripture because of that. For men, uh, for when Gentile who do not have the law, okay, they don't know the law, Gentile, uh, do the things in the law, these, although not having the law, are a law to themselves. Meaning people just know the right thing to do. You know, they don't have the Bible. They don't know that you're supposed to, to how to discipline, but they do it because they care and they love. So discipline is really a love thing. And if it's not done in love, it's going to mess up somebody. All right. Um, okay, I got 15 minutes. <laughs> Not bad kid. Okay, you're kind of slow. Not bad kid. All right, okay. You got to think like that. <laughs> so last year, I was looking, uh, sitting in the backyard, and I was watching the bird. How many are bird watcher? Oh, yeah, okay. I find you learn from animals so much. And these two little birds, they made a nest in the in thing, in a, the tree there. And uh, I, I'm supposing it's a dad and a mom bird. I don't think it's two dad or two mom, right? Probably a dad and a mom. Had to be a mom because there was some egg in it. <laughs> right. So they're flying all the time, right? And one is sitting there a couple hours. Then he moves on, goes and eat. But as soon as he moves out of that nest, the other one comes in. I'm watching them because it's a teamwork. Nobody's, you know, you don't say, well, my turn is not now. You stay there a little longer. <laughs> they don't. They just in and out, in and out for two, three weeks. I don't know how long it took for the eggs. Then the eggs hatch, and then... They're traveling back and forth. One is leaving, one is coming in. One is leaving, one is coming in. And when there's danger, they all, not, not a sound, everything is hiding, you know. And, and then, it, I mean, you can learn from nature. You know, they're working together. They're not fighting. And you know, the, the mother and father bird have a purpose. And they deposit what's needed for those little birds. And they grow up and they go and do the same thing. And God wants us to do that. Mother and father working together to feed those little guys, to train them, to disciple them so that they can live and do the same. All right. Uh, In 1978, we got saved. We began to go to church. We didn't know. I mean, we went to Catholic church once a year. And uh, anyway, we got saved, and we began to go to church. Uh, and our son, Travis, Pastor Travis, he's five years old. He's not disciplined. 
I mean, it is just raw material. <laughs> and you know, we go to church and they're doing the um, announcement and all that stuff, and like we do, worship. And he's running back and forth on the pew, you know. And you know, after after the the service, he's he's on the stage over there and he's playing uh, he's playing with the mic, you know. And I said, "Well, is that nice? He's going to be a preacher." He's on the mic. And then he goes, uh, he goes and this guy had a nice guitar, kind of like you, Roger. And he goes and plays with the guitar. You could see the guy's face. You know, and anyway, he does that kind of stuff. And after the service, the elder came to see me. And uh, I'll tell you what, I wrote it down what he said here. He says, I, I want to read you a scripture. He says, train up your child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. <laughs> wow, I said, what does that mean? <laughs> I mean, when you just come into church, you don't know, train up a child. You've never heard that. And then he, he reads Proverbs 13, 24, which says, Whosoever spared the rod hate his child. So I said, can you translate all that? He said, yes. I want you to discipline your kid. That's pretty simple, right? I needed something simple. Discipline your kid. So how do I do that? Well, take him in the basement. See, in those days, there was no, what do you call that? Uh, when your kids sit on the corner? Time out. There was no time out. It was a different time. <laughs> Yeah, it was totally different. So I said, okay, I'll do something. So, you know, we go to church on Sunday. And, you know, you know the new people always sit in the front, right? So because all the back is, is taken by all the, the older Christians. <laughs> so we have to sit close to the front. And he starts making, you know, his thing, whatever he wants to run and under the pew. So I told him before, I said, you're five. Five years old is a good age, okay? I said, if you... Do that, taking you in the bathroom in the basement, and I'm going to put your pants down, and I'm going to give you two good swap. He didn't believe me. <laughs> so service start and everything. Guess what? Okay, I'm taking him in my arm downstairs. Okay, that I won't do it again. Guarantee comes back up, same thing. Take him down there. And while I do that, everybody's looking at me like I'm going to damage my kid with heavy spanking or whatever. Anyway, after a month, for Sunday, Pastor Travis, awesome. <laughs> he sits beside me because the elder came to me and said, you got to discipline. He didn't tell my mother, uh, his mother, you got to discipline. He said to me. Because I guess he felt the man should take care of the discipline. Okay, so okay. So I took care of it, and then we got other kids, and then I, we got three kids, and they were all sitting there. Nobody would, uh, they would, nobody would jump around or do anything or go to the front and mess up with things. Nobody. Because I, I took charge, you know. Took a little while, but you know what? There's no bad kid. There's only parents that's not informed or that's not disciplined or that's not disciplined with love, right? So that's how we dealt with it, uh, okay? Um, uh, I believe in, uh, in spanking. Some people don't, but that's whatever. I know my Camilo one time took Josiah by the ear. Did you know that? In a store. And somebody called the CA, C, CAS on her. I mean, she loved her kid. Yeah. Just because she took him by the ear because he wasn't, you know, Jonah sometimes. He's not. Uh, <laughs> and, and they call CAS. So, but anything that you do with a kid, whether it's a, it's a spanking, whether it's a, a sit down on the corner by yourself, you do it in love. You explain, 
So we ended up that the kid wanted to have a board of correction. So I took a piece of board, kind of shaped it to like a paddle. And I re wrote the law on it. You never sash your mom. That was the number one. You sash your mom, I break every bone in your body. <laughs> the, that, that is the fear of God, or the fear of dad. Right? I wouldn't do it, but I said it. You know? And they knew. That was in the house, you don't sass mom, you don't. That's very important. And there was a the rule, rule that we had. Do you remember the rule? You don't remember? OK. We had four or five rules. And you know, when they broke the rule, that was the law, right? They went and got the board and said, Daddy, I broke the rule. There's a board. And I had got, got them trained to pick up the board and bring it. <laughs> Train your kid the way they should go, and they will not depart. <laughs> But when I did it, uh, you know, um, I, Travis, he, he was the one who got the most, right? <laughs> He's not here, so I can say that today, right? <laughs> By the fact, it's his birthday today. Oh, we didn't know. It's his birthday. He's not even here. <laughs> All right. After that, my second son was pretty wise. He, he did the right thing. No, it's... At five years old, we took him to church, trained him. At six years old, the police brought him home with his cousin, six years old. They went to the barn and they broke all the window. And when they, the police came with me and with those two kids, is that your kid? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't feel like saying there's no bad kid at that time <laughs> because I was not too impressed that they went to the barn and they broke all the window of the barn. How would you like that, Peter? It was a trailer? OK, it was next to the barn, whatever. One? OK, whatever. All right. <laughs> she's, uh, she's good on the detail, right? <laughs> Women are better. <laughs> anyway, still the police were involved in it, and uh, you know, I mean, 16 years old, they still was bringing him home, you know? Um, so I believe in the fear of God and the love of God. Uh, children should fear God the same way you fear God. And it's not being afraid, but also um, sh children should fear Fear their dad in one way. When I was 12, around that age, I stole 10 bucks. My father had a garage. And I went in there and I took 10 bucks. And I got caught by the person who works there. So he said, I'm going to tell your dad. And he said, uh, after I told you that. And my dad never called me on it. He never called me on it. And I'm waiting. He's going to approach me, and we're going to have a big discussion here. You know, that was his honor, you know, his honesty, his son does, does this, you know. And I'm thinking about it. He doesn't do nothing. And, you know, inside I said, why doesn't he come and talk to me about it? I did it. I got caught. He never did. That was the, the, the best thing he ever did in his life. Not say a word that time, because it got me worried. It got me thinking. And I kind of felt ashamed of myself, because I did that. I dishonored him, and he don't even approach me about it. And I know he would, but he didn't. And you know, there's things that affected us. So that was one thing that affected me forever. It's because he didn't say nothing. So um, I'm just about done. One more scripture. Hebrew 12, verse 6. For the Lord love and chastise and scourge every son who he received. So all of us 
God loves. And God wants to discipline you. He wants to chastise you when you do wrong. But God does it in love, okay? He doesn't put cancer on you so because you were bad. He doesn't put some sickness on you because he doesn't do the corporal punishment. You know, he works with the heart, kind of like my dad did. That's how God works. And he disciple, and he chastised. And I got the, the meaning of the word chastisement here. Um, to make someone understand that they have fallen and done something wrong and make them want to improve. That's what God wants us to do. You know, he wants you to deal with your past. And, you know, if there was anything that happened that made you close, he wants you to, you go to him and say, Lord, this happened to me, express yourself to him, and then you will be able to express yourself to them. And make them want it to improve. So that's what your kid has want to do. They want to be like you. You're perfect. How many thought your, your dad was perfect when you were young? And you found out he wasn't perfect. But our Heavenly Father is perfect. And he wants us to be perfect in what we do with our children. They are a gift from God. He gave them to us, and he will demand them back. They're not yours. They're on loan. And you're supposed to do the best as a dad to grow this kid to be what he wants them to be. This is awesome. This is, you know, dad is, is so important. I mean, maybe somebody, maybe Peter, you'll talk on mom on, or whatever, or Pastor Travis on relationship. But dad is so important. You know, there's some kid, the guy I was talking to you about, has 95% love. I mean, this guy is bursting at the seam. His kids are teenager. They won't want to be in the same room as he is. When they walk around him, if he's in the house, it's like they're walking on broken shell. They are so careful. Who has the problem, the kids or the dad? We don't have any bad kids. We only have some bad parents. And you know what? And you know today, open up your eyes. If your kids are little, I mean, great, start. You know, do it right. And if your kids are, are gone and upset and whatever, go back to them and say, listen, I messed up big time. I'm sorry. I did this. I did that. I didn't show love. I didn't discipline you in love. I'm so sorry. And just melt your pride away and just go to them. And uh, it will change your life. So God is discipling me in love, and I want to disciple you in love. I don't want to throw the book that you're bad, you're ugly, and you're good, all right? Uh, I guess that's it. I'm going to stop, okay? Did you get my message? Yes. So what's the title? All right. Say it one more time. I'd like to hear that. <laughs> All right. That's good. That's good. That's awesome. Right, Peter? So it's 12 o'clock. <clears throat> I'm uh, going to release you, I guess, uh, unless you want to take the mic, Peter, whatever. Um, I want to say thank you for you guys coming to church this morning. Weather is not good. Some of you live in Belleville. Some in Frankfurt, some live all over the place, and the road weren't nice. But you came to worship God and to hear the word. The worship will change you, and the word will change you. When you leave this place, you're t totally charged. You're going to be like a, an energizer, energizer, energizing bunny. Right. I got it. 
All right. God bless you. And have a good day.